Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back for a brand new review of Love and Marriage Huntsville season three, episode nine, Trouble in Paradise. Child, if you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you are back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Y'all, please do not hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you get anything out of the content. Also, hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time I upload a video. Now, child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. So when the episode first opens up, Maurice finally stands up for Kimmy because he knows it's gonna be problems later on if he don't. <laughs> I'm like, finally, Maurice, you woke up, honey. We thought you were asleep. So Maurice said, you know, when she corrects him, it's because she wants to better the business for Tisha and Marceau. And she does correct him and she corrects him often. So Marceau has to have the last word. So honey, he gonna say, Jalen was wrong for saying yes, ma'am. Now, I don't know when it became wrong to say yes, ma'am, because for me, I don't mind a good yes, ma'am. Honey, yes, ma'am, and whatever you're going to say. But I mean, I guess to each his own, child. Moving forward. Tisha decides to apologize to Kimmy for questioning her. Child, can y'all believe it? Because she can see how Kimmy will want to distance herself from a person that constantly questions them. Look at Tisha growing up. Child, let's hope this is the one thing that happens in Vegas that won't stay in Vegas. Honey, let's take that energy on back to Huntsville child a look at them brought Tisha and Kimmy together Martel was sitting up there looking like he was tearing up I'm like what is happening <laughs> child this is a mess honey thank God okay Kimmy versus Tisha is put to bed honey at least for now oh and Tisha this is just a side note honey I forgot to mention last review but honey Tisha is fine okay body yaddy 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 shout out to Megan Thee Stallion let me tell you something Marcel okay because they said she was a little chunk box back in the day so if you were a little bit Humpty Dumpty and you got a fine thing like Tisha, honey, I know she could be a little bit annoying, honey, because that's what Tisha like to do. She get it from her mama. Shout out to Juvenile. But Tisha is a beautiful woman. So I'm hoping you just acting a fool up and all up and through these episodes. And that's not how you actually treat your wife. I got my eye on you. Moving forward. It's the next morning. Everybody is sobering up and Tisha is making breakfast, her and Kimmy. Marceau can't even remember when he went to sleep. I was like, oh, y'all sure had a good night. Okay. So as they're eating breakfast, Kimmy starts asking if Mel is coming, right? Crickets. Nobody's saying nothing. So then Martel says, well, yeah, Mel says she wasn't coming. I talked to her yesterday. Well, honey, we know you checking. Marcel said, uh, yeah, maybe she's having second thoughts. That's what he said in the confessional. And honey, judging from the way this episode ended, she should have had second, third, fourth, fifth thoughts, all kinds of thoughts, honey. It should have been some telltale signs. No pun intended. So then Maurice says, well, is destiny coming? And he's looking straight at Martel. And I was like, why is he asking Martel that? And he's like, yeah, you haven't talked to her lately? Martel said every day. I was completely thrown off. Like, what does it mean? I'm like, okay. Things that make you go, hmm, okay. So then Tiffany bonehead ass. She gonna say, oh, I thought you were talking about your baby mama. Girl, shut up. Okay, I'm gonna hit you with a Martell. Shut up. Like, this is ridiculous. So I guess Martell just assumed that she was speaking of, you know, the side piece or whatever. So he was like, yeah, I definitely talk to her every day. And somebody said, for the kids. And Martell said, no, because of my child. But he, she was actually speaking of Mel, right? So he was like, who were you talking about? Tiffany was like, I was talking about Mel. Girl. He said, don't call her my baby mama. Okay, listen to me. I have had enough of Tiffany. She always saying some slick sh then acting like she don't know or care that it was offensive. Okay, how can you sit up here and call another black woman a baby mama? That is the most derogatory term that you can use. Girl, you're just as ignorant as the day is long. I wonder how Mel gonna feel knowing uh Tacky Tiffany is calling her his baby mama. I wonder if she gonna get over it as quickly as she wants Destiny to get over what she said, bringing that cold tea. I'm happy Martell actually corrected her, though, because that was really a stand-up move on his behalf. That is his ex-wife. Let me tell y'all something about me. I hate the term baby mama. Child, somebody tried to use it on me one day. I said, baby mama? You must be out your motherfucking mind. Let me tell you something, honey. I was married, had the ring, then I gave birth. Not saying the other way is wrong, but please put some respect with a K on my name. Girl, what is wrong with you? That is his ex-wife, the mother of his children. Ugh, 
little weirdo. So then she said in her confessional, you know, I'm not trying to be messy. I'm talking about Mel. She's like, I think she qualifies as a baby mama. She only had one, two, three, four of his kids. So you his baby mama. Oh my gosh, y'all. Oh my God. Listen, the way I fumed hearing her call this woman that honey, and I don't just too much care for Mel like that. I'm just going to keep it real with you. Okay. It's not a lot of them that I do care for. But the fact that you kept repeating baby mama over and over again, you want to get cussed out. How dare she? Honey, the amount of kids she has matters not, okay? What matters is that the kids were born in their marriage. Do you even know what constitutes as a baby mama? And what does your ex-husband consider you? So I guess he considers you his baby mama. Now you can put that term on yourself and you can label yourself that. But I am pretty sure that Mel does not want to be labeled his baby mama. And Mel, I'm gonna need to see exactly what you gonna say about this, honey. Moving forward. So it's time to clean up the kitchen. Martel stays back to help Kimmy and she thanks him for helping because it seems like the old Martel, honey. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you know, could you ever see yourself reconciling? He was like, you mean getting cool? <laughs> No, reconciling means getting back together. Oh, crazy bonehead boy. She's like, no, I mean, getting back together. Now, y'all know how I feel about them asking if they're going to get back together. He had a whole baby in an outside relationship that went on for five plus years. Why are you asking him? And Kimmy, you're supposed to be the most level-headed one. Or so that's what they say. Honey, why are you sitting here asking this man if there's a chance for reconciliation? Child, that don't make no sense. Martel was like, well, I don't know. Kimmy's like, you know, I saw y'all good together and it's kind of hard when you meet people as a couple to see them any other way. Well, honey, see them a different way because they're now Mel and Martel, two separate entities. They're no longer the Holtz. Holt versus the world or whatever they had, the Incredible Holtz or whatever child they was putting together. They are no longer that, okay? Martel was like, you know, it's just too fresh. And I find myself getting mad at things she did. But then I was thinking, you know, I had a whole baby on her. Here go, Kimmy. You know, it's, it's touchy. You know, everyone can hurt a relationship if there were things you weren't getting. And, you know, I would tell Maurice the same thing. You know, he can leave before he cheats. Kimmy, I usually hear you. But please stop suggesting that the two of them reconcile, okay? Ask yourself this. Would you want to reconcile with Maurice if he brought a whole newborn baby into your mix? Child, you barely know what's going on with Maurice Jr. Girl, keep up. So Martel is in his confessional. He's like, you know, I don't know why people think I always want to talk about Mel or the divorce or another relationship. I just want to move on. Honey, so do we. In the next scene, Tiffany and Lewis, child, they have this scene talking about the nape of their son's neck or whatever. Honey, it's blowing in the wind or something. He got a haircut. Okay, who really cares? So then she tries to throw a little underhanded shade and she's like, you know, the best part about being on good terms with your exes is having the kids and taking them over there and leaving them. It's not an issue. I can't stand Tiffany. <laughs> I can't stand her. I cannot stand her want to be perfect behind. I can't stand her. So then the two of them have this fake fight to demonstrate to all of us how perfect people work things out. Child, if y'all were all that perfect, you wouldn't be on your second marriage and you wouldn't have had to surprise him with a whole wedding. And honey, and y'all ain't fooling me. And uh, Carlos King, honey, I know you don't know me and probably don't care what I'm talking about. But I just want to let it be known that we don't need Tiffany next season. Okay? She's bringing nothing. Her husband brings nothing. Okay? So we're going to have to leave them out next season so that all of us can be in peace. Moving forward. The gang is ready to start the day and Mel arrives just in time. Honey, Martel was happy as hell. Honey, he lit up like a Christmas tree. Do y'all hear me? Child, he lit up like the Christmas tree in Rockefeller Center. Do y'all hear me? So she comes in and speaks, honey, y'all. Hey, oh my God. Hey, everybody. And then she hits Marcel with the side church hug. <laughs> I'm like, child, these two. I can't stand it. She wants to know where her room is going to be, right? She's like, well, I'm going to be sleeping. So, you know, they start joking about her sleeping with Martel. Low key, both of them are happy to see each other, child. And I don't care what y'all say. So they go take a shot that Tiffany made. Y'all don't want to take nothing from her. Mel said, you know, um, I didn't know you was going to be here. Mm-hmm. Well, child, wait till you hear what she said about you and your absence. I'm just saying. So after they take the shot, then all of a sudden the guys were playing foosball. And I'm like, I thought y'all was going to go. So Tisha is like, so Mel, how do you feel about Martel being here? She's like, oh, I didn't know he was coming. Okay. Mel, you must have not rehearsed your lines, honey, because according to him, you knew. He said he spoke to you yesterday. Child, she's like, I knew he would probably be here because y'all are still friends with him. She's like, but way to make sure I'm good when I get here. So Tisha was like, I don't know how she didn't know Martel was going to show up. He was on the text thread. 
Child Mel knew, honey. She trying to act shocked. So Tisha's like, you know, I feel like they will eventually get back together. Here you go with that. No, we don't want them back together. For what? 14 more years of suffrage? Girl, goodbye. She's like, you know, maybe I'm delusional. Well, honey, they have been saying that for seasons. Tiffany and her Kmart fashions, they're like, I hope they can put their differences aside and celebrate marriage because they're there for someone else. Oh, girl, hush and be happy you and your surprise groom were even invited. Moving forward, the sprinters arrive and it's off to the first stop on the itinerary. Destiny gonna catch up later, honey. By the time she get there, the trip gonna be over. I'm like, girl, what are you? So it's gonna be guys in one sprinter and women in the other. Martell is being teased by the guys about his tick, so they start talking about the little side hug, honey, because you know Melden, you really want to touch him. Over on the other bus, the ladies are talking about the chart-topping number one song that's sweeping the nation, Telltale Signs. <laughs> Child, y'all know I can be shady, honey. Shout out to Mel. So Mel is telling them, you know, she just finished the video, and they're like, oh, you got a little snippet of it? She's like, absolutely. So then they asked her if she had a Martell stunt double in the video. She's like, yes, bald head, brown skin. And girl, <laughs> oh, child, I'm so sick of him. So Marceau in the other bus, he's like, I don't know if I could be here. And I'm like, well, honey, I definitely wouldn't want to hang around Mel and Martell together or separately, okay? So then they start asking if it's awkward. He's like, no, you know, not yet. Maurice is like, you know, life after divorce is really difficult. Martell is saying all the right things right now, but we'll see. Child, Martell ain't gonna last 10 minutes. On the women's sprinter, Tisha is telling Mel it's gotta be great realizing your dreams and actually achieving them. Child, these two have come a long way since Tisha got kicked out of the event. Marceau is like, how can y'all just get a divorce? Like, how can you sign those papers? I'm ready to sign them papers. Shout out to Usher. Maurice said, um, you haven't been at that point. And Marceau said, you're acting like I've never been at the point of wanting to be divorced. I just decided not to. He said, you know, the percentage of marriages that want to be divorced at some moment or another is 100%. Yes, Marceau, you are absolutely right. We all have those moments where we want to divorce, okay? but Because that's a simple solution. But the hard part is sticking through it, okay? eliminate the problem that's what you do you eliminate the problem and you're fine or so you think honey but there are also some circumstances like outside children honey where it's better to choose you okay it's not always better to stay because it's cheaper to keep them. i think that's your philosophy i truly do so on the bus martell is saying like you know there is life after breakup he's like you know lewis and maurice they're probably happier now than they were at first martell somehow i just don't see that working out for you this way because this is your personality you also have to adjust to meet your partner where they are. So you can go into another marriage all you want to. But if you bring Martell with you and the personality that is shining through every time you jump up on the screen, honey, it's going to be the same outcome. I'm just letting you know. So then Maurice was like, yeah, you know, because with me and Kiowa, it lasted longer than it should have. Well, honey, she's saying the same thing about you. Lewis said, well, you know, some people stay for the kids. Marceau is like, yeah, I could have been divorced, but I stuck around. He said, my aunt gave me the best advice that she could have ever given me at my wedding. She was married 27 years. She said, you know, at times we stayed together just because of the kids. And looking back, she's glad she did because if you don't have nothing else, you're staying for the kids. Child, not you telling us all on your 15th uh, year anniversary trip that you staying for the kids. Child, goodbye. I get Marceau's point because their kids are the reason to keep fighting. But on the flip side, you have to remove yourself from relationships that no longer serve you. Okay. Kids can pick up on that energy. They know when you want to be there versus when you're being forced to be there. I'm just letting you know, honey, kids are smarter than you think. So Maurice is like, this is Vegas. Who wants to talk about divorce? Uh, the man whose trip it is, child, 15 years celebrating the marriage and he up there talking about divorce. Moving forward. They arrive at Tisha's surprise and Destiny and her midriff. They arrive, girl. Nice to see you, girl. We didn't think he was ever going to show up. So the guys start giving them the rules, right? He's like, okay, only go 80 miles per hour. Don't stop at red lights. Don't buy nothing from the man at the light on 5th Street because he always trying to sell you some. Don't go slow. Go a little bit fast. Try to stay in the middle. Go at least 45, but sometimes pick it up to 50 and get into it as you get into it. I'm like, what? <laughs> Charlie was saying them rules for 45 minutes. Do y'all hear me? Honey, I'd rather ride in a go-kart than listen to all that. So now that that's all over, honey, it's time to ride. So Martell is asking about a four-seater because Mel drives like she can't see over the steering wheel. But honey, the way Destiny is standing in between them while they have this petty argument about driving just so Martell can talk to Mel, this is sending me. I was like, y'all too, honey. Any excuse to speak to each other. 
Child, what makes you think that y'all two should be in the same car riding down the street, honey? I don't trust you like that, but an accidentally on purpose flipped over. Child, goodbye. So Destiny said, you know, I have to agree with Martel. Mel can't drive, but I'm going to ride with her regardless. Well, honey, why you couldn't drive? Child, why is this even a debate? Moving forward. Martel and his medium khaki shorts, honey, they can't fit into the car because the shorts have no slack. You know how you had that little slack that allows you to bend Okay, bend your knees, bend your back, or something, honey. He can't do nothing. So the pants have no slack, so he can barely bend his knees. Let me tell y'all something. He gonna have the wedgie of his life when he gets done. Do y'all hear me? <laughs> Baby, them some ball busting shorts if I ever seen some. So he said, you know, he hasn't bought anything nice since he's gained 15 pounds, honey. He refuses to purchase new clothes. Well, we gonna need you to re-up on those clothes, bruh, because they extra tight. And I do mean extra. So finally, Martel found a way to bend his knees and everybody's going to get ready to go. Honey, Martel looking sad as hell. I was like, oh. <laughs> so they're whipping in and out on the Vegas Strip. You know, all of them are talking about how good of a time it is. And oh my God, Vegas is beautiful. And look at this and look at that. And the way they were talking, it sounds like they've never been to Vegas. Now, I could be wrong, but it was just some of the things that they were saying. But honey, I'm happy y'all having a good time. So day turns into night and they stop to take a picture. Now, why they thought this was a good idea? I have no idea. So they stopped to take a picture. Mel and Martel, they hop out and immediately start saying something to each other. She's like, why you text me shaking my head? Because I wouldn't ride with you. He's like, I ain't want to ride with you, Beyonce. <laughs> now listen, the first time he called her Beyonce, I chuckled a little bit. Because I'm like, she does think she be there, okay? I mean, she definitely thinks she's Mrs. Carter. But... When you kept on with it, honey, it became some old bullshit, okay? Well, Martel really acts like a kindergarten boy. Just discovering girls, honey, don't know what to say. He know he miss Mel, honey, no matter how high pitch her voice gets, he know he missed that woman. So Tisha tells him that tomorrow they're splitting up, the girls are going to go one way, and the guys are going to go the other. She doesn't want the guys getting too crazy, so she goes and pulls Maurice to the side to make sure Marcel behaves. Mm, yeah, a moment of silence all right and i'm back she's like you know i know marceau is on cloud nine you know whatever happens in vegas stays in vegas so i need you to keep an eye on your brother because girls be out here eyeing guys tisha listen to me honey it's great to think that your man is the bee's knees honey you're supposed to but girl have you ever stopped to think your man be eyeing girls girl what are you talking about and this is like the 17,000 episode that you've blamed a woman for looking at your man honey a woman can only do what your man allows her to do so what are you even saying girl be quiet and I thought you weren't insecure honey what happened to that and if somebody needs to keep an eye on your spouse honey you've already lost the battle and I'm telling you from experience there is no way to keep tabs on a man 24 hours a day and also Maurice is his brother at the end of the day and he's definitely not going to be watching Marceau like you think so she's like you know I ain't got time to roll up on nobody Tisha please stop honey if he gonna do it he gonna do it no matter what you try to do to stop it it's going to be inevitable now I don't wish that on my worst enemy and I definitely don't wish it on you but all I'm saying is there's nothing more so I mean there's nothing more Reese can do to prevent it okay only you can prevent forest fires shout out to Smokey the Bear <laughs> Child, y'all know I'm silly so Maurice is like, so is this why you did the surprise therapy? She's like, mm-mm. She's like, you know, we're, we're going on dates more, so we got something out of it. Maurice says, so has it helped? So then she said, you know, it takes time. I'm not going to keep complaining when I see that he's trying. I'm just going to take this little bit he's giving and keep moving forward. Listen, y'all, all jokes aside, I was looking at Tisha's eyes, and I truly feel sad for her. I really feel bad for her, honey. I pray. I really do. I pray that she starts to gain her confidence and know that she's going to be good with or without Marceau. The fact that she says she'll take less than she deserves, honey, is just jarring. Like, why would you want to take less than you deserve? You're accomplished. You're a beautiful woman. Child, that just, I, that just didn't sit right in my spirit, honey. That was a mess. So Maurice is in his confessional. He's like, you know, the fact that Tisha is reaching out to me for help to make sure that her relationship is strong is important. So I want to listen to her. And if there's anything that I can do to help, I will. Well, that's stand up of you, Maurice. I still don't trust you like that. But I mean, at least you're listening. Moving forward. So Mel does a little sidebar with Martel. And child, when she called him over, I knew it was going to be a mess. I'm like, girl, please leave this man alone, honey. I'm convinced the two of you just want to talk to each other about any old thing. So she's like, so who's with the kids? Listen, before I step foot on a plane, a train, in an automobile, if I'm leaving, 
for any particular amount of time, I need to lay eyes or ears on my child. Okay, I, I'm not going to ask when I get there who has the kids. Girl, you should be talking and communicating with your children, whether it's his week or not. So she starts telling him, you know, about the video because he said that the kids were with his mom. So she was like, oh, okay, cool. She did good for you. She took off. Okay, that's nice. So then she starts telling him about the video. He immediately starts getting disrespectful. Okay, so we're going to keep score. Martell won. So he's like, you know, that BS. She's like, yeah, that BS. So then he's like, God dang on Beyonce. Martell too. Martell, cut it out, honey. If you don't want to talk, then honey, disengage. Don't sit there being passive aggressive. These two should never, ever speak to each other one on one without the presence of a mediator. Like ever. Because the way that they communicate is trash. Okay, it's giving very much dumpster juice. So then she tells him about the apology that she gave Brittany about the live that he did. So she's trying to tell him what he said on the live, but she can't quite get it right. And he's telling her that she's lying, right? He's like, you need to stop lying. She's like, I said, or something. So then he starts telling her to shut up in true Martell fashion, honey. She's like, you shut the F up. Martell three, Melody one. Child, this is a mess. Listen, Martell speaking to her like that, it really triggers me. Because that is the way my ex used to speak to me. We would be going perfectly fine. And then all of a sudden he'll just start cussing and completely lose it. It makes a person not want to communicate with you at all. And that is why they say for a narcissist, honey, you need to go straight. No contact. There should be no reason for you to speak to me. Anything that you need, honey, speak to my assistant, child. Because I refuse to put up with stuff like this. This is just a mess. So as she's talking, honey, he gets up and walks away. So then she gets up and goes over to where he is. That should have been your cue to say nothing else to him. Like leave him be, Mel. When you see that things are getting heated, disengage, honey. You and your blonde wig. He's like, gone, Beyonce. You being too disrespectful. She's like, do you have a problem with my singing? Well, honey, quite a bit of us do. I think it's so uncool. I think it's so uncool. Shout out to Mel. <laughs> Child, quite a bit of us thinking the same thing, honey. She's like, I ain't call you Tay Diggs, Morris Chestnut, nobody. These two are the most draining people I've ever seen on television, honey. And they have the dumbest arguments I have ever seen. These are not even insults. Beyonce, Morris Chestnut, Tay Diggs. Honey, these are some of the most beautiful people on earth. What are y'all talking about? Child, just say any old thing. Martell, man, she pulled a candy on him and got her little song done and got all of her coinage off of him running off with that side chick. That's what he really mad about. So then she keeps going, what's your problem? What's your problem with me, Martell? Honey, I thought she was gonna hit him with a Martell hope. Cause y'all know she loves to do that. She's like, why do you keep saying that? He's like, because the song is about me. You know, I'm gonna say something. She's like, y'all wanna see this little clip of my video? Uh, ma'am, no. <laughs> Not right now, honey. This is not the time. So she starts antagonizing him. Maurice said, listen, Martell, this is the moment. This is the moment that we were talking about. He's like, I know Martell is going to end up saying something that he going to regret. So Mel over there doing the most, honey. Kimmy is like, Mel, that's antagonizing him. She's like antagonizing him. Oh, my God. So then he's like, we got four kids. You hurting me. Skirt. I say, what now? Not her song hurting you, but you laid up with a whole other relationship for five years and called her a hoe on national TV. Sir, goodbye. Sure. You and your hanged her way, V-neck. Boy, goodbye. So she said, we got four kids. Were you thinking about the four kids before you made a fifth one? Honey, and wasn't. He's like, I always held down my home. This is what pisses me off. Men think they can cheat and you coming home at night and paying bills is holding down your home. No, sir. Holding down your home would be being loyal to your wife, respecting your family. Like, what are you talking about? You held down your home. You sound crazy. So she continues to play the world debut of her music video right in front of him, honey. Telltale signs. <laughs> so Tisha and Kimmy is like, don't play this in front of him, Mel. But child Mel don't want to hear nothing, honey, but her song. So he's like, you're playing a song about me, your ex-husband. She's like, it's not only about you. I bet you think this song is about you. You're so vain. You probably think this song is about you, don't you, don't you? Child, if y'all don't shut up, Mel. Now, honey, listen to me. The song is definitely about Martell, honey, and it's okay to admit that. Child, Taylor Swift made millions off her exes. Honey, if it wasn't for that ex, honey, she wouldn't be getting those coins. Girl, please, you better say that song about him and flip your lace front to the other side. Girl, goodbye. 
So Martell said, this song was being sung around the house two years ago. She's like, before we got a divorce, he's like, you planned the divorce. Well, honey, I would hope so. Because if you've been cheating on me for five years, you best believe I'm plotting, planning, scheming, and everything to get from up under you. You better believe it. So I don't know what you were trying to prove right there, honey, but child. She's like, before we got divorced, of course, Martell has to say shut up, honey, because he don't know no other word. That fifth grade vocabulary of his, oh, child, it's just a mess. She's like, you shut up. So Maurice is like, he just wants to know why the kids know the song. So they're getting heated, yelling, screaming, and all that. Mel is like, they don't know the song is about him. Marcel said, you are not going to out-argue a woman. Stop it, bro. So then we see Mel getting a little vehicle, honey, and she gone. Burnt rubber. You have both drained the life out of me in just this 15 minutes. Both of y'all wrong. Mel, you knew talking to him about that live was going to bring out his ignorance. You chose the wrong place and the wrong time to talk to him about that. This is a trip where you're supposed to be having fun. If you know Martell is going to trigger you in that way, stay away from him. The emotions and the, everything is too raw and too real right now. Like, go to your mutual corners and stay there. I know you want to be seen, honey. He's watching. Trust. Trust and believe. Watching every move that you make. Girl, call me so I can teach you how to be seen and not heard, honey. It's a fool. Martell, you want to speak on respect, honey? Every time you speak to her, it's shut up this, BS that, you this, you that, name calling, yelling all in her face, getting extra assertive. Your kids are going to see this as well. What the two of you do are doing is not effective communication. And they will see this just like they will see that video. So Mel was like, you know, he mad about my singing career. Oh, child. Mel, pipe down, honey. He's mad you're making money off of his stupidity. And this is who y'all want to get back together? Honey, they need to be on opposite ends of the earth. Do y'all hear me? I could never go on a trip like this with these kind of people. Because I do not like to pay money, get all hyped up, that I'm going to go somewhere and enjoy my time, and then I have to listen to people fussing, and fighting, and arguing. Brings the whole morale of the trip down. Honey, and that was the end of the episode. Child, this was a mess. Please don't hesitate to comment down below. Tell me exactly what you think. Do you think Martell was in the wrong? Do you think Mel was in the wrong? Or do you think they both was in the wrong? Me, personally, in my opinion, I feel like they both played a part. Both of them were wrong. One of you has to disengage. And I don't even feel like y'all need to be having sidebars. Okay, I know it's probably good for TV, but this is just really looking crazy. I cannot wait to hear what you guys have to say and what your comments and your thoughts are. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.